Welcome to All IndyCar, where I talk about anything and everything IndyCar related. In motorsports, families can reign supreme. The Forrest family in NHRA, the Elliots, Earnhardts, and Petties in NASCAR. However, in IndyCar, families just don't seem to work out. The only example I can think of of an IndyCar family that seems to work is the Herdas, but apart from that, that's basically it. Sure, the Andretti's are an IndyCar, but we'd all be lying to ourselves if we said that Marco was on the same level as his father and grandfather. The the topic of today's video, however, is a family that reaches across motorsports. So let's get into this. Thomas Schechter is the son of 1979 F1 world champion Jody Schechter. Thomas was born the year after, on September 21st, 1980. At the age of 11, he started his karting career in South Africa, where he would find success early on, grabbing a national championship in 1995. The next year, he would move to Formula Vs and Formula Fords in South Africa, grabbing two wins in Formula Fords. Then he moved to Europe to race in the British Formula Vauxhall Championship amongst fellow future IndyCar winner Takuma Sato. He would be awarded Rookie of the Year. In 1999, he won the Formula Opel Euro Series Championship in dominating fashion, breaking series records previously set by drivers like Mika Hakkinen, Rubens Barrichello, and David Gorthard. He would race in Formula Nissan and various Formula 3 series after this. He would later become a test and reserve driver for Jaguar in 2001, but was let go after caught curb crawling. Basically eyeing prostitutes, but for legal reasons, I can say that's what he did. Schechter would then sign for Red Bull Cheever Racing for the 2002 IndyCar season. He'd be the Indy 500 co-rookie of the year, but Eddie Cheever was unhappy with the frequency of crashes. One of which coming at the season opener at Homestead when Thomas Schechter punted Eddie Cheever into the wall a few laps into the race. Buddy Rice was signed to the team to replace Schechter, but contractual agreements forced Schechter to be in that car for two more races. Cheever Cheever gave Rice the better equipment, but Schechter defied all odds by winning at Michigan, giving Eddie Cheever the biggest middle finger ever conceived by physics. Despite the Michigan win, Thomas Schechter was fired by Red Bull, but then hired by Target Chip Ganassi to partner Scott Dixon for the 2003 season. Besides a third place run at Michigan and a solid run at Indy, his season was a sheet of paper, and the season was also criticized for his frequent crashes and inconsistency. The season was boring until we reached the second Texas race and the last race of the 2003 season. Thomas Schechter was on his way out at Ganassi and everybody knew it, so he wanted to go out with a bang, but being the catalyst for one of the worst non-fatal racing accidents ever was probably not what he intended. After this season, he would move over to Panther Racing for the next two years. The 2004 season would be pretty awful, but in 2005, he put together his best season in my opinion. Three podiums and a win at Texas is one hell of a feat, but once again, inconsistency would hold him back. In mid-2005, he would announce his plans to race with Vision Racing and IndyCar, and race with Team South America in the all-new A1 GP series. His time at Vision Racing was plagued with inconsistency once again, and by 2008, he would be part-time in the series until his last race at the ill-fated 2011 Las Vegas race. He retired from motorsports with advice from his father shortly after this race. In Thomas Schechter's IndyCar career, he mustered two wins, eight poles, and an unremarkable but respectable career. Despite his career never living up to the legendary one his father had, he still accomplished more than most in his IndyCar career, and I think he should be respected for it.